So what is new? It's actually not a lot of things, but there's a lot of thinking behind those few things. So we changed the service backbone of IT for IT a little bit. Um, we simplified conceptual service. We changed a bit in logical service. Uh, we included the service catalog entry and uh, the direct to correct now called actual service instead of actual service DI. Uh, that all seems very simple, but the important thing is the white paper behind it that has been written. Uh, and that is actually based on work that was done in PricewaterhouseCooper where they implemented the service backbone using various tools. Um, and so we got to truly test out, does it work or does it not work? And that's the reason for us to trim a little bit in the standard. Um, then as a consequence of the work we did with financial management, we focused a lot about how can you do cost tracking across the value chain? And it turned out that um, by using the service backbone and using the concepts of all the connectedness that exists in IT for IT, can actually do a pretty smart way of doing cost tracking. Uh, and there's a white paper on that. And the white paper has fed a lot of updates to the standard in terms of data flow that needs to happen, as well as some attribute definition that uh, are coming into the functional component to support what data you want to collect in various places for IT for IT in order to support financial management. And then finally, there is a few minor changes here and there that is basically just so well, people have discovered box, if you will, in 2.0 and that has been introduced. Um, in in uh, Some of it is also around some of the definition that was written in, in the course section of the standard to clarify and make it a bit more precise what is being done. There's actually, if you look into the details, in general, the structure has been more aligned across the value chains, the four value chains uh, documented. And uh, in 2.0, they were written by four different people. Um, and uh, even though we tried to coordinate it a lot, it wasn't completely aligned and it's much better aligned now in 2.1. I won't go over these uh, edits that thought. Uh, you can see it from yourself when you read it. So <clears throat> the first change is a pretty simple change, but it's actually pretty important. <laughs> if you look at the value chain picture, in the middle, it used to say, um, reference architecture, but that's really not kind of the middle of it. It's all a part of the reference architecture. Now, the important thing that ties all the value chains together and, and ties the value chains into the supporting activities is really the service backbone. So we promoted the concept of the service backbone into the value chain concept. So uh, that's actually pretty important when we start introducing this topic. And that you will also see that as we go through the presentation today, that the concept of what you can really get out of having this service backbone is, is pretty amazing. The next thing is the, um, uh, the level one diagram itself. And what you see here is 2.0. Um, so you should all know that and, and, uh, and love it. And uh, now I'll press the button and we'll shift into 2.1 and you have to think about, it. so what really changed? There we go. Did you see it? Can you, uh, can you see what changed? Uh, probably not, which is a good thing. Uh, the changes are very small and it should be so because uh, a lot of people take this level one diagram as a starting point for a lot of discussions. You all learned it. So we haven't dramatically changed what you start out with. Uh, but there are a few changes uh, in this diagram. So the changes are, well, <laughs> we changed some of the names of some of the um, data objects. So it's now called enterprise architecture in the architecture component. Um, we, uh, we changed uh, the logical service to, well, it used to be called logical service blueprint, but now we call it logical service. The blueprint concept confused a lot of people, but we'll come back to that. The blueprint still exists actually um, at level two. Um, the um, service model consistency around uh, desired service and actual service, it was called actual service CI and that concept of CI was really a block, it shouldn't be there. So we have consistency now. Uh, the service catalog entry has become part of the service backbone. That's a pretty controversial uh, topic, actually, and it's been going back and forth a number of times, but essentially it is part of defining the services, so it's, it's part of the backbone. Uh, 
the uh, the bigger change is that the conceptual service blueprint disappeared. Um, so service portfolio at level one only really have a single thing that it maintains, which is the conceptual service. And again, that comes back to the simplification that was the realization when Pricewaterhouse Cuba was was actually implementing the service backbone that you really did not help to have to. It actually confused more than it helped. Um, the other change that happened, and that's a consequence of IT financial management, is that in the chargeback showback component in R2F, we now have a chargeback record in addition to the chargeback contract. Uh, and that's pretty, again, pretty important to have and track. Uh, so that has got introduced. That's all. Pretty simple. So we can end here and say this is what happened in uh, IT for IT in version 2.1. Of course, the details, that's what matters. So if we go to <clears throat> each of the uh, four value streams at level two, um, we'll see that there is a bit more changes going on. <clears throat> the first one is in S2P that the conceptual service blueprint actually still exists as an auxiliary data object. So it's not core in tracking end to end, but it's still something you want to keep track on the various versions of a particular conceptual service. The rest of the changes are really around uh, the data flows that is happening, uh, both uh, in terms of systems of record data flows and in terms of engagement data flows that has been added because of working IT financial management. And there's quite a lot of them uh, in S2P, which is not surprising because that's where it starts and ends in terms of IT financial management. Here I won't go over the details of how the various budget information or scoping information, et cetera, is being um, fed back and forth between the components. That's all documented in the standard, but it's important to note that there is now a lot of uh, these flows being documented and they support the financial management. And that's a very important enrichment of the standard. It is not changing the standard, it's enriching the standard, uh, which of course, again, is a very good thing. So you don't have to throw any information away as such. Moving on to the R2D requirement to deploy. Again, the, uh, there is a number of, of uh, data flows that has been introduced because of IT financial management. And you would also see here that the logical service blueprint still exists. So basically what we did was to say, okay, the logical service is something that captures that you have made designs for a particular service and how you want to deliver that service. So it says systems of record that captures that you have service designs. The blueprints are really the uh, the architectural drawings of how you develop your piece of software. And, and the, yours, you will have uh, many artifacts of, and you would associate them with the logical service that is being developed. So the logical service is more a container for all the things you do around service design. And so that change helps in communication because you don't have at level one to talk about this blueprint thing. You just basically say you have a logical service, which is part of the service design, and that's where you keep track on what you have designed. Moving on to request to fulfill. There is, again, as with the uh, S2P, quite a lot of things happening as a consequence of IT financial management. That is not surprising because that's where you consume the services and that's where you have these components like usage and chargeback showback, which obviously is very relevant to IT financial management. So the data flow here has been significantly uh, enriched and added so that it really reflects what you need to do. We'll come back to some of that much more in as we move through this uh, presentation today. There was also the service model naming consistency with design service and an actual service that is, of course, is reflected at level two as well. Um, and, and the fact that the service catalog entry has become part of the service backbone, but that's the same as what you saw at level one. Finally, we get to the um, detect to correct at level two. Detect to correct is the least impacted in 2.1. Again, it's really just this service model consistency that, that has changed. 
there isn't really anything coming in from the um, uh, IT financial management side on Detector Correct. Uh, the fact that it's running, it's running, that's nothing to do with the financial management. That's all happening at request to fulfill. So anybody working a lot in the D2C area won't really see any significant changes except for the actual service is now called actual service and not actual service CI. The way you model an actual service is probably as a network of configuration items as we love from existing SteamDB technologies, um, but it's abstracted as an actual service. <clears throat> 